Bible says it is good for brothers and sisters to dwell together. How good it is to see your brother sitting close to you. Woo! Father, we thank you this moment. Because I am not the one speaking. You are the one that is using me for this particular time for your glory. I am not powerful, God. You are the most powerful, Lord. You use who you want to use for your glory. Amen. I have committed abominable sins. I'm not even supposed to be behind this pulpit. But you say you choose who you choose. You, you ask, you see, you say, was it not Jacob, Esau's brother? But you still choose Jacob over Esau. Amen. So you are the God. There is no one like you. We just want to thank you this day that you have made. It is a blessed day. You touched me since last night. I didn't sleep till 5 o'clock. And today you have told me that what you have taught me last night, I should reveal it to your people. May this word pierce their soul and mind. May you confiscate hearts and minds from the darkness and bring it back to light. Amen. Do it, O oh Lord, because you have done it before. Yes. And you will do it today. Amen. You are a great God. There is no one like you. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, I welcome you in our midst because we are more than two here. I thank you, O oh God. This and all the masses we pray. Amen. I want to, I want to recognize the silent people in the crowd. Um, I always recognize this man uh, since I met him. He's, he's a very uh, good man, uh, um, very, very good. His name is uh, Mr. Etienne. He's here with his wife and family. If we can stand up, please, sir. Mr. Etienne uh, Jemati. Mr. and Mrs. Etienne Jemati, are here. Very, very nice people. I've met I've them. I've, I've been in their home. Uh, they are very nice people. Uh, matter of fact, the computer I'm using right now, he bought it for me and put a program there. If I study that, if I study that program for only six months, I will make you $90,000, but I'm lazy. The, the word of God don't allow me. So he, he said, Usman, he said, he said, the same way you have zeal for God, you, you should have zeal for that, pro, for that program. Because the, he has taught somebody in his home, and that person is now making $90,000 a year. I have it here. He bought this computer for me. He downloaded it. This stuff in there. But I am too caught up with the word of God. But uh, God will bless him and God will increase him. God will, God will find solace in his heart, in his home. Any weapon fashion against you will not prosper. And your, you and your family are, are tree planted by the river. Nothing will break you all. The fight will come, but you will overcome. But thank you, mommy. God bless you all. Yeah. I want, I, want to, I want to acknowledge my beautiful wife that just came from Africa. Uh, can you stand up, please? Uh, she just came from Africa. Yeah, Pastor Malu told me, he said, people are looking for this street called you over here messing up, man. He said, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> and I, want to, I want to thank everybody, the newcomers, and everybody that I didn't recognize, but I love you all. Uh, I thank Papa Mado and uh, the, the first lady of the house, um, Pastor Toby. I thank uh, Evangel Pastor Vivian in the house, <laughs> Brother Frank, and everybody else. Franklin. Brother Franklin. And, and also, there's, there's somebody back there I want to thank, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Musa, I, 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 did, I was going to dress specially to wear the shoes that the wife gave me because the shoe was so nice. We went home there and the wife just take it out and say, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, try this. Would this fit you? I say, yes, this will fit me. This, this really fit me. And he, she gave me, God bless you because you have blessed a man of God. The Bible says, whatsoever you have done to the least of these, you have done it unto me. So, what, uh, God gracious. When you do something to men or women of God, you have done it to God. You see, I back, script, I back my words with scripture. Because uh, before going to the world, my, I, I'm, I'm always telling Papa and Mama, I say, 
My, 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 my motive is that when you enter here, you will receive. And how, how, how are you going to receive is by me, her, him, Pastor Vivian, doing the right thing that God requires. So when we access God, for you, the flocks, the sheep, you will receive. Because that, that's who Moses was. Moses always asked God for the Israelite and God will answer. Always. Because why? He was living right. Although he was a killer before. But whenever God touches you, your name will change. Everything will change. So in the name of Jesus, God will touch you today and your name will change. Amen. We are going to talk about the topic here. Heaven's language. And the theme is access granted. Um... I came here today this morning, there was a little boy over there uh, standing at the front of the door and Papa Madu was behind us and the boy woke up to the door and, and he, he started pushing the door he said, open, open, open I said, man, open the door, man uh, you can do it, you can, you can do some magic to open this door Say, said, I can't open it Why? He don't have that language to access that door The only person that has that language to access that door is Papa Madu so what I say here, what is a language? I'm using a lot of metaphors. And, and please, please, and the money will not come to me. It's going to come to this church. I will make sure I make an audio CD. If I have time to do probably a video for, for DVD, I will do it. I want you to buy it. When you go home, listen to it. It will bless you. If not ever, I will not preach in here. Because it blesses me. Myself, it blesses me. What is language? The method of human communication, either spoken or written, consisting of the use of words in structure and conventional way. The other one says the system of communication used by a particular community or country. A system of communication used by a particular community or country. Get that in your mind used by a particular community or country. Before I even go forward, just I want to lay the foundation that will get into the heavenly, the heavenly language that will make you access God. But I want to lay foundation. That's why I say, please buy the CD. I will not take one dollar from it. Probably only to buy another CD and bless other, others out there. I don't, I don't, I, I, I need money. He, know, he knows my situation a lot sometimes. He will just take three hundred dollars, give it to me. I told him, I said, I come into, you see, I, I want you to understand that like Papa was talking, I'm, I'm getting out of the scripture. That's why sometimes Papa says, you can write scripture, you can only preach it. I'm getting, because I want people to understand that God can do, can, God can do it. Don't play God. I told him the first day I walked in his house, I said, this relationship, I'm not his pastors that eat money. Whatever I do here for you, don't give me nothing. Look at him. Sometimes he forced me, he said, man, he said, just come, I will buy your gas, I will deal. I said, I, I get ashamed. He, he get mad, he said, man, just come, don't, don't, don't worry about it, I will, I will take care of you. He took, he took over, how I many, it's four, five months now, I haven't been there. This is not about money. For me, I don't know for other people. For me, it's not about money. I just love God, the things he has done for me, and the things he is about to do for me. I, I just love him. A third uh, 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 definition says, listen to this carefully. Language is a body of words and the system for their use common to a people who are of the same community or nation, the same geographical area, or the same cultural background. So if we say language is a body of words uh, uh, and the system for the use of common to a people who are of the same community or nation, and the same geographical area or the same cultural background, my question to you should be, what language do you speak, read and write well? Don't worry, don't write it down. You're going to buy this CD. It will bless you. <laughs> what language do you speak, read or write well? What community, nation, geographical area and cultural background or home you came from or, be, or belong to? Do you know the constitution Laws, statutes, precepts, bylaws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or belong to? 
Do you know the leaders and do you abide to the constitution, laws, rules and regulations of that which you came from or belong to? Do you believe in your leaders of that community, nation, town, village, geographical area or the culture you came from or, be, or you belong to? Because every community, nations, cities, states, towns, villages, homes, geographical areas, territories, and culture has a set of principles, values, standards, and policies that are incorporated in that constitution that is ingrained in the laws, rules, and regulations of that particular area. And also the language that is well spoken and understood. For instance, if I came from South, I came from Southern Province of Sierra Leone, where many languages or dialects are spoken. But I grew up in a particular town where they speak the language called Mende. So now, if if I go to the north part of Sierra Leone to access that community. To be able to talk to a leader to that community, oh my God, I have to probably learn Timini or Limba or other language. I will not access that community until I learn that language, or only probably somebody interpret that language for me. So you cannot access something that you are not part of. It's impossible unless somebody asks to make you give you the access. And then migration of people, culture, principles, and values, and the learning of new languages. We're going somewhere. I know you, you, you might be saying, he, he, he said the theme was access granted. I want to lay the foundation for you. So when we get there, you understand where, where, where I'm going. Every person or persons that migrate from one place to another will neither bring with them to their new place of migration or left behind their culture, principles, and values from their original bad place. For example, I came from a different geographical location, the continent of Africa, that has a different culture from the culture of the current nation or place of my new resident, which is America. I had the choice, the value that was ingrained in me in Sierra Leone, in that little town, I had that choice to leave that value, principles and culture behind and come here and, and get introduced to a different culture or values or principles. But it's not good for me. I don't know for somebody else. It's not good for me to do it. You, you don't have to forget your culture. But for me, I should also learn the culture and language of my new resident. But my principles and values, I will not compromise with the principles and values of my new place of residence. I will learn the language of my new residents due to the fact that that language is what I will use to grant me access to that community or to the leaders of that community. If you come to the United States of America and you don't even know nothing about English, even single English like the Chinese come or some, I'm not trying to be stereotypical here, or even some Africans come, they don't know nothing, not English. It's very hard to access the community, jobs, study things. You came from or belong to. Now it's getting, it's getting, now sit tight, it's getting very sweet here. Yeah. Sit tight, sit tight. In this particular question, we are going to talk about three geographical areas. Do you want me to repeat the question again? I don't want you to miss it. Now the foundation is coming, now you're going to get it straight. What community? Nation, geographical area, and cultural background, home or kingdom you came from or you belong to. You remember we say you have to access any community, you have to know the language. There are three geographical areas. Heavenly kingdom. Do you want me to repeat the question again? I want you to get it. What community, nation, geographical area, and cultural background, home? or kingdom you came from or you belong to. Let me speak. There is a heavenly kingdom. Do you do you came you came from heaven? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is <laughs> Somebody say yeah. 
is this is so sweet. There is earthly kingdom, and there is satanic regions and territories. Three. There is heavenly kingdom, earthly kingdom, satanic regions and territories. Question number question, question this question I will answer it. I believe every creation came from where? Who's heaven? No, 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 it's too dark. You know, this is sweet. It's, it's heaven. Heaven. Every creation came from where? Heaven. Again, every creation came from where? Heaven. So where do you belong? Heaven. God bless you. Amen. Every creation came from heaven and migrated to earth to live in a particular territory, region, and geographical areas which are comprised of continents, nations, states, cities, towns, villages, and communities. To know that, turn, turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, verses 26, 27, and 28. So that's that. So in that, you belong to that community. If you just say Amen. amen. In the beginning, God created what? Okay, I love this crowd. Verses 26. Go down to verses 26. You see, there was a preacher there. Um, that, that, that girl right there, she's going to be a powerful preacher. That's why there is a question. The answer is coming over there. She knows the Bible. Go to verses 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Where was God when He said, Let's make man out of our image? Heaven. 27. Verses 27. God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him. Male and female created he them. So man was created in heaven. So he belonged to the community of heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm coming. Yes. You don't belong to satanic regions. You don't belong to this earthly kingdom. You are an immigrant of this kingdom here. Yes. You belong to heaven. You came from heaven. Your maker is heaven. If I was, I'm born in, 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 in Bo because my daddy was residing in where? Bo. So your creator, God, is in heaven. You are a heavenly kingdom child. Amen. You belong to that community. Amen. Don't fool yourself. Yes, sir. I will never fool myself. I had before, I will not deny it. Thinking I belong to this. A sojourning place. We are just sojourners. Walking here in two minutes. In this crowd tomorrow, our Pastor Solomon is gone. Hey, I used to be a good pastor. No, I just came here. I just migrated here to do something. I'll be gone. Verse 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Migration took place. Man created in heaven, sent to act to replenish it. That's how migration took place. Created in heaven, sent to act to replenish it. Because this earthly kingdom is, is influenced and controlled by God too. You will know pretty soon. I love teaching. Living on earth as Immigrants or sojourners. Okay, question number two. I mean, do you know the constitution, laws, statutes, precepts, bylaws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or belong to? If you say you came from heaven, you should know the constitution of heaven. And I'm telling you the constitution of heaven prison. This is yes, it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it I love this. And you know, <laughs> we know the constitution of earthly kingdom where we are right now, America or Sierra Leone or Cameroon. 
And some of us know the constitution of the satanic regions where we worship the devil idols. But do you know the constitution of where you came from or, or where you belong to? Heaven. Do you know the constitution? That's what the question is asking. Do you know the constitution, laws, statutes, precepts, bylaws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or, or you belong to? Go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Hallelujah. Amen. Starting from 3, verses 3. This is the constitution, the commandment that God gave Moses to give the children of Israel. And God spoke all these words. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day. This is very critical. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor, which means work, and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. Neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreign residing in your towns. That's what Pastor Malu was talking about coming to church. People even people even say, ah, can you put me on the schedule for Sunday? And that's not even their time to work. That's not even their hour to work. They forget that the money they earn, God give it to them. She knows, and I know there are some people here. I think they know. Uh, I, I used to have a cousin, my real cousin, my real, real cousin. He used to have a lot of money in Sierra Leone. His name is Stephen Bill. He used to have helicopters, planes. I rode them before I came here. Planes, helicopters, money. Sometimes the government of Sierra Leone, SFPP, they will catch him and, and bring him to the parliament. They say he has a machine making money. But this guy, when, when in the morning, when we try to go to church near my mom, he will ask my mom, where did God step last night? Because he thinks the money, the cars, we have cars. In the, people are not even know we have cars in the, in the, in the compound. Yeah, cars. Sometimes he made cars to me. He will come to, he was in Ukraine. He will come to uh, Rus Russia, tell them, make this, I'll pay cash. Cars to me, cars. So he, he, he believes those are idols. He was worshipping them. Money was all over. But God let him get used to the money a little bit. And he slapped him. The money, the cars, everything. None of his family even lay hands on him. <laughs> That's who God is. You don't play God. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and earth. The sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So when it's Sunday, when you have work, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday, rest on Sunday. Come give thanks to God. Because the breath that you breathe in was given, is given to you by God. You didn't make yourself. You cannot make yourself. The strength you have, the energy you have to do what you are doing was given to you by God. And 12, we are still in the constitution of heaven. 12 say, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Amen. Children, this is the constitution where you belong to, where you came from. Listen again, children, the constitution of heaven say, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. 
You shall not give false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the constitution of the heavenly kingdom. Question three. Do you know your leaders and do you abide by the constitution, laws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or you belong to? We say we came from heaven. And if you are, if you are from heavenly kingdom, there are three leaders. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. <laughs> there is no other leader. If you, if you really believe you're coming from heavenly kingdom, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To abide or obey the, to the constitution, laws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or belong to, prove that you are a good citizen and a patriot of that particular place. If I say I came from heaven uh, and, and I have to abide to the Ten Commandments, before I don't, but now I do. I told my wife and papa that I said it's going to be a time people will not understand me. They will, they will feel I'm weird because I'm not of this world anymore. My mind has rene renewed. My mind has been changed. Money, no money. I'm not of this world anymore. So sometimes people look at me like it's weird. Why is acting like that? Because where I came from is different compared to where I am. So I have to live by the law of, of where I came from. He said to abide or obey the constitution, laws, rules, and regulations of that which you came from or belong to. Prove that you are a good citizen or a patriot of that particular place. So if we all agree that we came from heaven, we all should abide and obey the Ten Commandments, which is comprised of the constitution, laws, rules, and regulations of heaven. And obeying heaven's constitution, laws, rules, and regulations will guide you to navigate through the constitution, law, rules, and regulations of the earthly kingdom. Because the same three rulers that are ruling heaven have influence over earth. They are the one that created earth. They own the earth. And when you live by their constitution, you will not get caught up in, in drunk driving. When you live by their constitution, you will not get caught up in, 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 in immoral sexuality or, or something that is that is established as a rule on earth because every because this earth is covered by these three rulers. But because we don't want to abide to the rules and regulation of where we came from, we are getting caught up in the earthly world. But until you abide to the rules and regulation of where you came from then you will not get caught up anymore in the, in the earthly things. Yeah. Living on earth as immigrants or sojourns, we should also know and recognize three leaders and other sub-leaders. Now we're talking about earthly kingdoms. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, kings and queens, presidents, governors, house of representatives, mayors and primary chiefs, and so on. As immigrants on earth, we if we obey the laws, rules, and regulations which govern heaven, we shouldn't have any problem with these laws, rules, and regulations established by the sub-leaders on earth. Because the constitution, like I said, from heaven was enacted to govern both heaven and earth. Yes, it was. It was enacted to govern both heaven and earth. Now, living in satanic regions as immigrants, or sojourners, because we all came from heaven. But well, some people choose to live in those regions. There are only one ruler in satanic rule, in satanic uh, 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 region. Satanic region has Satan as a leader, and its forces, and the dark angels that Satan came with when God kicked him out from heaven. In this region, rules and regulations are made by, dev by the devil. But the only good thing is that God has dominion over these regions too. Now, there are repercussions, consequences, and punishments for breaking these laws, rules, and regulations made by God to govern the heavenly and earthly kingdom.
and also the satanic kingdom. Repercussion, consequences, and punishment for breaking heavenly laws, rules, and regulations in heaven and on earth. Turn to uh, Revelation. We'll be done soon. We're almost there. Revelation 12, 1 11. Consequences are like punishment. If they say don't drink and drive, it's the law of the United States. You drink and drive, they will punish you. You go to jail, you pay fine. So when you break heavenly rules too, and regulation and, and laws, you are bound for punishment. A lot of people like, like Cliff Dollar, big money making church people, uh, he said, don't worry about that, you have grace. No, no. yes, you have grace. That's why when you do stuff, you come by, you beg God, God will forgive you. But at the end, He's going to punish you. He said it. It's not me. He said it. Revelation 12, 1, 11. And, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under, the, under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, traveling in breath and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, Satan, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, and he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I stopped there before going to fight. Satan has broke the rule. He was an angel before. God cast him out. He has broken the rule. Because somebody is about to have a child, they want to murder. The constitution says, Thou shalt not murder. 5. Verses 5. And she brought from a man child, from a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragons, the devil, Satan. And the dragon fought and his angels. You see, the dragon was fighting. And because Satan was a good angel to God, but because of his trying to go against the constitution and law of heaven, now God is fighting him to kick him out. That is his punishment. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So you see, he had his punishment for not obeying the constitution of heaven. If you want to really know, I don't want to do too much scripture here. If you want to know another scripture, is, is Adam and Eve. When they were, because I want to go faster now. When they were in the Garden of Eden, God told them, He commanded them, and that is commandment. He said, Don't eat of this tree. But they didn't listen to God. They ate from that tree. They broke the constitution of heaven where they came from. God punished them. What he did, he drove them from the garden and put cherubims and, 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 and swords to guard the life. So the tree of life, so that they cannot access that tree of, that tree of life anymore. So that was their punishment for breaking the, 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 the constitution of heaven. Are you happy to be here today? Yes. Amen. Are you learning? Yes. 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 Okay. Making it short, we're going into the rest of here. Yes. What language do you speak, read or write well? There, there, we have three languages, heavenly languages. I'm using metaphor. I'm using certain things for languages, but they're not really languages. They are like characters or personality or attitude you can have to access God. But well, I'm just replacing it with a metaphor. What language do you speak, read, or write well? We have heavenly languages. We have earthly languages. We have satanic languages. Heavenly languages, these are languages that grant you access to heaven. Forget it, you will go. Heavenly languages grant you access to heaven. 
Ugly languages that ugly languages are languages that grant you access or deny you access to heaven. Heavenly languages grant you access. Ugly languages can grant you and can also deny you. Satanic languages forget it, they deny you access to heaven. You will not enter. Heavenly languages. Love. Now, now we, we are almost there. If you get this today, you will overcome anything. Love. If you want to mark 1231, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. There is no commandment greater than this. Access granted if you love, if you love somebody. Patient. Isaiah 4, 30, 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Patient. We grant you access to heaven. Compassion. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Compassionate heart, we grant you access to heaven. Obedience, First Samuel 15, 22. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than to sacrifice, and to heal is better than the fat of ram. Obedience will grant you access to heaven. Forgiveness. These are heavenly languages. Forgiveness. Colossians 3 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgiveness will grant you access to heaven. My God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, doing good. Doing good. Matthew 25, 40 to 45. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatsoever you did for one of the, the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Which means the computer that you gave me, uh, you didn't do it by yourself. You did it for God. And God will bless you because you give it to me. Amen. Which means the blessings that you have bestowed upon me, you have done it unto God. So God will bless you. Because men do stuff for people, they think they're doing it for men. See, I back my words with scriptures. <laughs> See, whatsoever you have done on the list of these, you have done it. Mm -hmm. So when you give, Pastor, Pastor appreciate Sunday, you're giving it for God. Yeah. Don't be scared. If you give with all your heart, if you don't come here with testimony in your mouth, I will never preach it. I challenge you. Now, with all your hearts. Faith. Another language, heavenly language. Luke 17, 6. He replied, If you have faith as small as a monster seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Yes. Faith, another heavenly language. <laughs> Believing in God, another heavenly language. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life means you are in heaven. Access granted. Righteousness. Another heavenly language that will grant you access. Proverbs 21 3. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So you can bring thousand here. If you don't do what is right to God, it's not acceptable. Access granted if you are righteous. Accepting Christ as your personal Savior, a language that will access you to God. Revelation 3:20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with me, have dinner with him, and he will and he with me. Access granted. If you accept Christ, access is granted to go to heaven. Amen. My God. Humility. Proverbs 11 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes to wisdom. Access granted. Humbleness. Heavenly language. James 4 10. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Access granted. Clean hearts. Psalm 24 3 to 4. Who may ascend the hill of. I just did it when we're doing the, 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 the tithe. Who may ascend 
on the hill of the Lord. Who may stand in his holy place? Where is his holy place? Heaven. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, his holy place is yeah, heaven. Heaven. He said, Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and pure heart. I will come here, stand here, and preach from Genesis to Revelation. If this is not clean, you are nothing. You are nothing will happen. This, 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 this. Don't play with it. This. That's why you don't see it. It's sacred. This has to be clean for your husband, for your wife. If you don't want somebody, you don't want them, let it go. Don't play again. But this has to be clean. For one another. I will do, I will perform all type manner of things here, but if this is not clean, it's void. And God knows you. He created you. He made you. So you can't hide from God. I can hide and play them or play anybody here. But God knows my heart. If my heart is not clean, I'm just saying it right now for you guys to look at me like I'm a good preacher. God damn me. Access granted with a clean heart. So today, I want you to know that these languages, if you take them, because you belong to heaven, and you came from heaven, now you know the constitution of heaven. Now you know the leaders of heaven. If you abide to the constitution, and you speak this language to access heaven, if you don't know this language, believe in God, righteousness, to, uh, clean heart, pure heart, doing good, you cannot access heaven, because there's a language we say to access a community or a place where you came from or a town or a city. So this is the language that you use to access heaven. You don't know this language, you don't know it. You know, satanic language are hatred. You can't access heaven. Jealousy, satanic language, you can't access heaven. Backbiting, satanic language, you can't access heaven. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not doing good. Satanic language, you can't access heaven. Crossing, satanic language, you can't access heaven. <laughs> My God, Sarada Gusi Kiriya Dara Gusa Taya Bakiara da Gusa. There is a God! I created you! Stop! Let's stop. Stop a little bit when you go home today, when you're sleeping. Think, who created me? How was it created by, by this computer? How was it created by stick? Is a God responsible? Satanic language will deny you access to heaven with all what you have. And it is so bad that I'm done almost. It is so bad because to enjoy life out here and the grave is heavy on you. You will ask God, give me one more chance, let me go back. I thought it wasn't so, but it is so. <laughs> See, I thought it wasn't so, but it is so. I was driving cars, money, women, houses. I thought I am the giant. And God said, I was telling you, but you didn't believe me. When you go in the revelation, every man will be accountable for their action and inaction. He said, the wicked can never go unpunished. You come to him, you say, forgive me, he forgive you. But on the day of reckoning, he will punish you. He will not go unpunished, he will not escape. So let's leave satanic languages, hatred, by fighting, jealousy, not doing good. Let's leave those languages and, and, and deal with heavenly language to access heaven. I want, I want today, if you are here, and you know, like I used to be, number one God, here I am. I used to be using satanic language that have stopped me not to access heaven, that have stopped my blessing for a long time. If you are that type of person, salvation is for only one person. It's not for husband and wife. If I die, if they ask her, I was telling her, if they ask her, if, 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 they, if she want to get buried for me, she will say, nope. So salvation is one person. If you are that person, you want to rededicate your life to God, or you want to give your life back to God, even pastors to rededicate their life. If you are that person, you are in this crowd today. Come outside. You are not coming for me. I I I I I, I guarantee that God will do it. 
It's not for me. God just used me for now. Probably he will, he will not use me for another six months. So don't look at the pastor. If I'm a nonsense man, if you look at me, because God used nonsense things. He said, I use the foolish things to confound the wise. People will think, yeah, yeah, yeah. He will take somebody from, from the street that is a prostitute and bring him here and use him or her here and use her. And you act like your wife. I'm not going to that church. That man, no. God has his upon the man. What can you do? <laughs> so if you are that person, come outside. We're going to pray for you. I am very happy my brother came. I'm very happy. You, see, you, don't, you don't look to the pastor. I, I will hide if you want to look at me. Look behind me. Because behind me is cross standing behind me that is speaking through me. I'm just opening my dirty mouth. But it's God that is using me. So if you are that person, please come outside. See, children, honor their mother and their father. They came because they know they are guilty of that. God bless you. From today, they will honor their mother and father. Thank you, Papa, one of the elders came. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. She is guilty. I'm not trying to put her in the spa. Her on the spa. She came here one day. We were sitting there and I said, What's going on? Are you okay? She said, Yeah, yeah. I said, What do you want? She said, Oh, I want to start working again full time or be calling full time. I said, Write a letter and close it in the envelope. Let me go put it on the altar. I said, God will help you. So I met her again. I said, Why are you not coming to church? She said, Oh, now I won't send you this way. I said, But you remember what you wrote in the letter? Your tie, you, you say when when that happened, you pay your tie all that. She said, Yeah. I said, Okay. I said, Yesterday I met her. I said, Are you coming to church today? She said, Yeah. Why didn't you see your ties go to God? I asked her, Do you want to open your letter that you wrote so you can give testimony? She said, Not yet. I think there's more in there to come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ancient of days. Hmm. As old as you are, you will never fade. Ancient of days, as old as you are. Forgive 
us all, oh God, individually and categorically as a church. Have mercy upon us, wash us with the blood of your son Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, there is nothing you cannot do. You are God of Israel, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. The God of Pat the Red Sea for the Israelites, the God that opened the blind eyes, the God that healed cancer, the God that healed HIV, the God that told me that in order to vanish in Sierra Leone, the God of Daniel, the God of Shelly Mission and Obedigo, the God of Joseph from prison, he became a prime minister. That is the same God, a shame of days. You are the same, you will never change. Bless your people, not because I have said it, but because you say they took a bold step without looking nobody, without even looking at me, the foolish one you're using. But they came here because they have heard your word, and your word is like a double-edged sword that pierces souls. Today, confiscate each and every mind, let them not be corrupt anymore. Each and every unforgiving heart, may you give them spiritual heart and heavenly hearts, oh God. May you bless them with heavenly communication and give them that language so that they will access you, oh God. Everything that the devil has placed in their life, in their marriages, in their homes, in their jobs, in their finances, Lord, I ask you to remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. May they leave them to see their children's children. Every generational process that has been from the devil, oh God. I go up your mighty name to break it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every possible that has been pursued in life, pursue them back, oh God. Every tormentor that has been tormented in life, torment them back, oh God. Whoever is here that is sick among them, is perfect in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal them, oh God. I pray. I thank you for this church. Lay your fear in all of us hearts. To do the right thing, especially with the leaders, so that when we access them, we access you for them, you will answer. Amen. God, what I am praying for here, and you know in my heart, is to everyone to come in here and feel like come and know that you dwell in this house. May you dwell in this house. Amen. Whatever the leaders of this house have done to you, forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. Whatever I have done individually, that that has seen will follow this church. God forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. Whatever the immigration has done, oh Father, that is falling down, will follow this house. Father, forgive them for letting you know what they will do. We just thank you for your great God. Amen. We heard your word. We cherish you. We, you are an awesome God. You are a powerful God. You are a mighty God. There is nothing you cannot do. Lord, I don't lay hands. But as I lay hands, may your blessing follow them, oh God. Amen. May you favor them, oh God, among men and women. Wherever they stand, oh God, may they be the giant, may they be the head, not the tail, oh God. Father, may nothing disturb them every Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I cannot do your job, oh God. You are the one who can do it, Heavenly Father. Whoever is in the crowd that you want to receive your blessing, may they receive it, oh God. The Father of this house, Heavenly Father, may you keep on strengthening him, oh God. May you keep on giving him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, oh God. Instruct him to do what you, you, you want him to do, not what he want to do for this church. Bless his children. Bless the first study of this church, oh God. Wherever the children are, bless them, oh God. Wherever they are, educationally, Father God, financially, bless them, oh God. May they pass divine course, oh God. The children here, oh God, we commit them in your hands, oh God. May they not sit down with bad friends in school, oh God. May they come out to be good children and listen to their mom and dad, oh God. Father, we thank you for this altar. We thank you for your word today. Bless these families, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I call upon the Father.